I want to thank you for talking to the little people. Mm. You should just be hanging out Shut with up. Emmy Award winners. Shut up. You know? Don't you have one? <laughs> oh, I hate you. <laughs> Don't you have an Emmy? No, I live Aww. under the train in Queens. <laughs> Tonight on the show, I play Game of Moans with SNL writer Katie Rich, find what's funny in sports right now with comedian Dan Soder, and maybe add Captain Belichick to the team. But first, I was on Jimmy Kimmel just now. Yeah. What? That was pretty sweet, and clearly it went amazing. Yeah. I said that hilarious thing that I said. Yeah. I mean, I would say it was magical, but you guys watched it, so you know. <laughs> Obviously, we taped this earlier, so fingers crossed I didn't mess anything up or say anything too embarrassing or get cut from the show. If I did, I'm sure you will all tweet at me and let me know. <laughs> on a somewhat Kimmel-related note, one of the great American sports makes its triumphant return on Monday night. I'm talking, of course, about The Bachelorette. Yes! It's just like the NCAA tournament, except the men are used and exploited less. <laughs> this season, JoJo's back and she's got 26 Bachelor athletes. S student bachelors uh, playing for the chance to pretend to fall in love and get fake engaged on television. The best part about the Bachelorette preseason, of course, is when the scouting reports get released, which they were last week. And this year's dudes are interesting. <laughs> like, okay, first off, we've got three Jameses James F., James S., and not kidding, singer songwriter James Taylor. <laughs> How sweet it is to be loved by him. So three Jameses, two Nicks, and Aaron Rodgers' brother in a pear tree. But let's start with luxury real estate agent Chad, who, as you can see, is wearing the official uniform of Bachelorette contestants everywhere, a deep V and a soft pastel balanced out by some rugged facial scruff, but not too much. Killing it, Chad. When Chad was asked, what's your greatest achievement to date, he responded, being born good looking, oh, God. <laughs> which is a smooth as hell way of saying, I have achieved nothing since birth. <laughs> so he'll make top three easy. Then there's my boy Evan, who's listed as a 33 year old erectile dysfunction expert. What? Okay, but what do you do for a job though? <laughs> Evan was asked, would you describe yourself as the party starter, the wingman, or the laid back one? And he said, I start out laid back, but then end up getting the party started. <laughs> Starts out laid back, ends up getting the party started. That's why he's the expert. Evan, if the party's getting started for more than four hours, please call your doctor. <laughs> but my favorite has to be commercial banker Derek. On his questionnaire, he was asked, what is the most outrageous thing you have ever done? To which he responded, drunkenly skinny dipping in the ocean at 3 a.m. when the sharks are all active. Which does sound pretty outrageous, Derek, but unfortunately, you are wrong. Uh, first of all, because sharks are always active, because if they stop swimming, they die. But also because the most outrageous thing you've ever done was earlier on the questionnaire when you were asked, if you were stranded on a desert island, what three things would you bring with you and why and what, under any circumstance, could you not tolerate on that island? You said, as long as the island wasn't covered in cucumbers, I'd be all right. The only thing a man really needs is duct tape. What? That is the most outrageous thing you've ever done. What does that mean, Derek? Who is that offended by cucumbers? What kind of island would be covered in cucumbers? Is it the Thousand Island? You get to bring three things and you chose duct tape and cucumber hatred. You can have all the roses as long as you can tell me what the f that means. None of those guys are sensible draft picks though and since this has become a major sport with actual fantasy leagues, we gotta think about this in terms of drafting. So the guys you want this year are medical sales rep Chase. He's good looking and seems not crazy. Firefighter Grant, also good looking, also not crazy, also firefighter. Yeah. And my number one pick, 25-year-old Marine Alex, who mentioned saving someone from a burning car on his questionnaire. Well, 
Derek is over here talking about being afraid of Cucumber Island. <laughs> so Marine and firefighter, Annie's hot. That's, that's what triple threat means. Best of luck to you in your drafts and enjoy The Bachelorette. At least three of these guys will. Three go to the fantasy suites. Three dudes are gonna bang her. Moving on. There's a lot going on in the other major sports right now too, but sometimes those sports aren't as funny as The Bachelorette. So I called up the funniest guy I know, my friend Dan Soder, to help me find the funny in sports this week. And oh, we found it. Dan Soder, hi. Hi, Katie. We're just gonna get teed up on some of the sports topics of the day, and then you're gonna help me find what's really funny about them. That's why you gave me a clipboard. Yeah. The Toronto Raptors beat the Miami Heat in game seven. Big news. You know what I think it was? What? Drake was in New York. <laughs> was he at the game? I don't know. You, you would have known if Drake was at the game. Yeah. <laughs> Right. He's like, he, he, he makes his presence known. It's like when you're at a high school basketball game and all the little kids go and shoot when there's a timeout. <laughs> That's what Drake does, but he just goes out and he's like, I like the Raptors! And we're like, yeah, we got it, you're from the six. It's always weird because I always imagine Drake just nuzzling to NBA players. <laughs> I feel like that's his technique, where he just like nuzzles in, or they're like, oh, Drake's nuzzling. This means he likes you. What's next? The Preakness is coming up this weekend. That's a headline. The Preakness is coming up this weekend. Cool. <laughs> if you're into horse racing, you're incredibly wealthy or a degenerate gambler. Or like a, a, an animal, the opposite of an animal activist. Or you, or you, you have like a weird horses. sexual yeah. horse fetish. Okay. You're like a Catherine the Great. Yeah. You're like, I'm just here for the horse dog. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. there was an article in the New York Times like last week about the, uh, the horse that won the Triple Crown last year, American yeah. Pharaoh. The article went into like really creepy detail about kind horse of, sex. What kind of music he puts on. Yeah, and, and like, it was describing one of the female horses and be like, like the aptly named something beauty. I'm like, okay, guy writing this, this guy, article. Yeah, he's just in a robe writing the article. <laughs> he's, he's like, like oh, the... with a quill pen. That's got to be weird, though. Like, if you're a kid growing up around that, you just hear it and you're like, ah! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> you either win the Triple Crown, yeah. and then you become, like, the mayor of <laughs> Mill, or you get turned into glue. I know. Right? Uh, That's a lot of pressure. I know. All right, let's 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 get the next one. Russian doping scandal, probable ban in Rio. Probable ban in Rio? So their track and field team yeah. cannot internationally compete. Yeah, because they were jacked up. Yeah. Like the hamburger meat that we eat in this country. It's in keeping with the evil of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> that it almost, I feel like he was there like administering the steroids. Oh, 100%. Like, I stick you with this, you go faster. And they're like, yes. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. There, for it's us. not at all surprising. Because on Putin's like 63rd birthday in that hockey game, he yeah. scored eight goals. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like Putin's uh, secretary of personal fitness was like Bill Romanowski. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you need more steroids. And he's like, I like Bill. He is very mild tempered. <laughs> He was president, and he's like, I stepped down from president, but now I'm prime minister, more powerful than president. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, go for it, Vlad. What do we got next? Jose Bautista got punched by Rugnid Odor. Sure did. I mean, he is, sure did. You watch his face, like they've slowed it down on the internet, and he's like mad, and he's doing that thing, and then it just comes in, and you just see him get hit, and then his face he's is like, just like, oh. I think baseball needs more more face punching. Yeah. Like if you weren't paying attention, you're paying attention yeah. now. Yeah, Somebody's cool. gonna punch in the face. I get ramped up for foul balls and <laughs> Batista getting socked right in the mouth. All right, last one, what do we got? The 76ers will wear StubHub patches in 2017. Which makes perfect sense because if there's one thing everybody wants, it's tickets to yeah. 76ers. Oh, how do I get tickets to see the Sixers? <laughs> oh, it's right there, Oh, StubHub. thank God, oh, StubHub. Oh, oh cool, oh. they're for 50 cents on StubHub. <laughs> WNBA does that already. So this is going to be like... But if a tree falls in a forest. <laughs> does Rebecca Lobo hear it? <laughs> at least the 76ers are the first at something. Yes! Uh, first team to have ads on there. I found down. the bright side. Put I'll that down. It. I wrote it down. I already wrote it down. Okay. And now after every game, they can say, we'd like to tank our sponsors. <laughs> ah, she can't be stopped. This is how you win Emmys. <laughs> Dan, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Katie. What a blast. It always is. Uh, your special, not special, 
true. Comes out Saturday at 11 on Comedy Central. Yeah. Really exciting. Thanks. Remember, I came here before yes. I filmed it. <laughs> and you were like, special airs sometime next year. Head on a swivel. No, no idea when it comes out. Now we know. May 21st at 11 p.m. on Comedy Central. Perfect. E Eastern. Um, okay. <laughs> I love Dan Soder, and I wish he could do this show every day. Watch his special Saturday before he becomes a huge star. Remember us when you win your Emmys, Dan. Stay humble. Coming up, Katie Rich and I listen to people having sex or playing tennis. Yep, we'll be right back. Did you hear about the bench Big Poppy is getting in Central Park? <laughs> would you ever sit on that bench? Yeah, I just wouldn't wear pants. It would bother me, but what am I going to do, vandalize it? If you could look the person who raised all that money in the eye and say one thing to them, pretend that's me, look me in the eye, what would you say? Can I think about this for two seconds? You sure can. Yourself. I think that, that that's what I would say. Just kidding. I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. I wouldn't <laughs> you tell look, you to you yourself. Look so sad. I wouldn't tell you to. I'm a little upset about that. I don't like that. I don't even know that's true. I don't. I still don't believe that it's it true. It is true. I raised the money. It was me. Yourself. And I married that guy. Welcome back to Garbage Time, guys. This weekend marks the start of the French Open. The French call it Roland Garros. I call it Le Tennis I Will Not Watch. But if I do spend any time watching Le Tennis, I won't really be watching. I'll only be listening. Because, to me, Tennis sounds like sex. <laughs> and if you put the sounds of Serena, Nadal, and Djokovic on a Trey Songs record, well, you might start to feel stuff. <laughs> this whole thing really got me in the mood. To play Game of Moans with Weekend Update writer Katie Rich, of course. What did you think I meant, perv? Here's how this works. Uh, our producers are going to play a sound. It is either a grunt from last year's French Open or a moan from a sex scene. You know, yeah, sex. I'm aware of what those are. Good. If that sounds easy, they make it hard by putting a tennis noise at the beginning of all the clips. Okay, let's do it. Let's hear the first one. Okay, what? Play it, play it again. Okay, that's a murder scene. Yeah. Either way, she's faking it. <laughs> I know what I think. Do you know what you think? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. go. I picked up the wrong paddle. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm committing to it. There are no mistakes. OK, what, it, what was it? Ah, yes! Oh. Mm. Also, oh. that's the sound I make when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> Play it one more time. <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh, oh, God. No, I it's, didn't ask for it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Go. Yeah, that's a man reaching climax. Think, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it was a, a teddy head. bear? <laughs> a teddy bear? So again, I was wrong. That was not a man reaching <laughs> climax. <laughs> okay. Next one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? Oh! He said, oh, God. Play it again. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's. Oh my God, Djokovic, stop it! <laughs> there are children watching. Next one. <laughs> that's me on the toilet. <laughs> Play it again. That's fun. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go. It's the opposite of what you think. Like, yeah, that's what I'm that's doing. That's what I'm doing. That's my theory. Ah. Oh. <laughs> ah it's like a dolphin. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to even. That's McGruber. <laughs> Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan. Okay, close. <laughs> close. It was an SNL thing. Yeah. I could have sworn that was MacGruber when he when he on the on his wife's. No with the... spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> did you guys ask Katie if we could use recordings yeah. of her having sex? Because that's really creepy if you did it. No, that was me meeting Drake. <laughs> Wait, ready? Let's let's role play it with the sound. Hi, I'm Drake. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> Go. 
Oh. Aww. Kristen Wiig, my girl. Okay, this last one is gonna be winner take all. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, that came by surprise. Right? Literally came by surprise. <laughs> Do it again. I need to hear the finish. Hold on. Yeah. What, do it one more time. Ooh. Okay, that is weird. I want that to be sex so bad. I really hope I'm wrong. Yeah! Oh, no, 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 no. That's not real. It literally has chicken under his boot. <laughs> well, that's just hot. I can't believe he put on all that weight to play that part. <laughs> anyway, Katie, thank you for doing this. Thank you. It's always really fun to have you. you here. Thank you. It's always great to be here. And the, the season finale of SNL is this weekend? Yes, with Fred Armisen. That's going to be really fun. Yes, and maybe if you listen really closely, you can hear me in the background making similar noises. Oh! Ah! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Thanks, Katie. You're welcome, Katie. Coming up, I'm adding cheap beer and dropping dog food. Stick around. Hey, sports fans, remember this? This week, last year, Riley Curry became Twitter's favorite thing since Odd Animal Couples. A goat and a dog! Ah, so cute! But reporter Brett Friedlander was not impressed. He tweeted, Steph Curry's kid is cute. That doesn't mean she should have been at the presser. There are professionals on deadlines there with jobs to do, too. That's cool. Your new job will be catching on Twitter, nerd. This has been Remember This? The friends are back. They're back. Welcome back to Garbage Time, guys. It's time for Ad Job. Uh, James S. is 27 and lists his occupation as bachelor super fan. <laughs> You're unemployed. <laughs> First up, I'm going to add the Atlanta Falcons for redoing the pricing on concessions at their games next season. The new prices, $2 Cokes, $2 hot dogs, and most importantly, $5 beers. I don't think they're going to need to pump in fake crowd noise anymore, which, by the way, no one talks about the guy who got fired for doing that was named Roddy White, and that's crazy. <laughs> there were two people in the organization named Roddy White. Have you ever met a Roddy before? <laughs> and I'm going to drop Serena Williams for making a bad food decision. So this hotel has a doggy menu. So I ordered him the salmon and rice, because I thought, I ate salmon. Before you judge me, look at it. I mean, come on, it looks good. I think it looks good. Don't judge me, I ate a spoonful. Let's fast forward to two hours. I just ran to the toilet like, whew, like I thought I was gonna pass out. <laughs> just to translate for you men, when us women say, I ran to the toilet and was gonna pass out, we pooped. We just don't wanna say it. It's a, it was a bad poop situation, and we should be allowed to say it because you say it. Stop butt shaming us. <laughs> Next, I'm going to add. <laughs> I'm going to add badass Norwegian Stein Hoff, that's first name Stein, last name Hoff, uh, who is attempting to solo row. Uh, Stein Hoff sounds like a last name. It's Stein Hoff, get it right. He's going to solo row a boat from New York to London. This is a 24-foot boat, which this man is going to be in for 90 days. He's going to be eating freeze-dried food. There will be no assistance with him. Are, are you scared for your life? Uh, no. No, I'm not scared. I'm um, looking forward to it. No I was going on a boat trip. Like, this sounds like it's going to suck. How do you feel? Well, I was excited. Thanks. And I'm going to drop Linda Holiday, girlfriend of Bill Belichick, because as much as I love this photo that she posted over the weekend, she captioned it, Boats, Buffet, and Bay, my three favorite bees, not necessarily in that order. Bill Belichick is nobody's bay. His name starts with B. He made that very easy for you. Please don't call him Bay. He is my coach and savior. Finally, I'm going to add this reporter's security team for protecting her from a rather aggressive fan at a soccer match on Saturday. I know the fans are on the pitch with the players. I don't have the champions. I don't think they can quite believe it. Just wonderful. Well, that one's not having much fun. It's nice to have people off camera looking out for you. Which is why I'm going to drop KTLA producers for forcing meteorologist Liberty Chan to put on a sweater during her broadcast. Even into tomorrow. What's going on? 
Uh, you want me to put this on? Why? Because it's cold? You get a lot of emails. What? There you go. Really? There you go. Okay. That's nice. I look like a librarian now. I need... That works. First of all, I now know what that producer's into, and I really didn't ever need to know that. But why any producer would ever think that that would be okay is beyond me. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> Coming up, we crowd our garbage time hero of the week. Matt's been standing there the whole time. We'll be right back. Say hi. Welcome back to Garbage Time, guys. Running out of time on the show and still need to crown our Garbage Time Hero of the Week. This week and all weeks, for that matter, it's Leah Still. Thank you for everyone supporting me and the Hot Dog Bundy family. Hello, party! She's amazing. All right, guys, that's all the time we have this week. Thanks to Dan Soder and Katie Rich and, of course, Jimmy Kimmel. That was so much fun. Thanks to all of you guys as well. As always, have a great week. Here's more fun. Two Roddy Whites. What organization? Katie Dolan. Hi. Why did I just drink that with two hands? It has a handle like and I went. It's like it's warm. You think they pee on it? Probably. You think they poop on it? I don't know if anyone would go that far. Sorry. Now she, now I have to fire her. No! I think dogs might know. Dogs might know dogs that might Big know. Poppy, that, that you don't like Big Poppy. No, dogs probably won't know. No, probably not.